my friend, it's Pat Sloan. Today is Wednesday and it is What's in Your Closet, our Block Wednesday quilt along. So what's in our closet this week? It just might be for Block 11 some hand-me-downs. Yes, 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 it is a fact of life. Many of us have hand-me-downs, whether they are things from uh, your siblings, uh, your cousins, your mom's friends. <laughs> <laughs> you had clothes that somebody else had before or you might be a thrifter and you're out there getting your own hand-me-downs now as an adult I was one of those first child first grandchild on both sides so I tended to have very little hand-me-downs I did um, occasionally something but it was kind of rare because they kind of enjoyed buying little girl stuff and for my dad's mom she didn't have any little girls. She just had my dad and his brother. So I was quite, quite an exciting event to happen. <laughs> this is a cute little girl they could buy all kinds of little things for. So uh, I don't have a lot of hand-me-down experience, but I have thrifted a few things in my time and it is so fun. So this is our block. And for the bonus, I just did a table runner because I think for April that is kind of a fun thing. Weather's kind of getting nice, hopefully soon, and you might be outside, so you might just want to do a little table runner to spiff up an area. So I have, okay, so here's the layout. Remember, you have the layout. We're going to go look at all my blocks together, and I am thinking I'm going to switch these two placement-wise for because of color. So I need some blue down here. So I will be using the background that I've used before. Let me move that light. So here's the background that's on all of them. I am going to have this as the square. So let me get this over here. So there you go. So the square part, and then I'm going to add the tan. I'm going to put tan in there. I thought about doing a dark, but I decided on tan ultimately. And then my corners will be this, this uh, darker sort of buttons like a milliflory type thing. So this will be the plus sign here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the block and then meet you on the other side where we're gonna look at all of them together. Hand-me-downs block and I did a little fussy cutting. I do have plenty of this fabric, the drawing room, my fabric line. So I fussy cut those and that's so fun. Now, this is where I'm gonna switch a little things, switch a few things. I will put this blue one over here because I feel like it needs more blue on this left side. And I will take the brown hugs and kiss. I don't remember what it was. It's X and O's block. Uh, so there we go. And now I'm going to get the other camera because there's some sashing I had auditioned last time that I no likey, no likey. So we're going to, we're going to look at it. I had... Okay, so here you can see them all together, the family portrait. Uh, so I have these two side sashings and I think they're just, they're just not the best. So I have some other ones, just toss those over here. I think this is going to be better. That I just need to keep it more, a lot more blue, blue tan. Yeah, 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 that is it. That is better. Now, of course, there's sashings around these. I'm not, I've not picked those yet, but I just had those two. Yes, and then I can sew all of that. And then we'll be working the last few blocks on the right-hand side. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look now at a quilt parade of your blocks. We start out with Carol's block, which is in the gorgeous uh, yellow, oranges, blacks, because look at all of hers, beautiful fall colors together. And I love the fabric in the center of that big block that's used with the branches and the, with the tree trunks and the birds, super cool. Cindy comes in with this very beautiful, soft colors, peaches, light blues, little gray, little yellow, very yummy. Connie's got a group photo for us. Oh, these are looking fabulous. Look at all of her sashing fabrics. So cool to use those really interesting prints with the, um, oh, the like the medallions in them. Love that. Cynthia's using my fabric uh, and it is so pretty. Love her fussy cutting. Love it. Deb's is pinks and purples. They look gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Doriana's has a gorgeous, um, look at that. Well, there's light blue, that perfect light blue. I have that fabric and I have the one with the sun, the sunglasses and the, and the flowers. <gasps> look at the sunglasses. I have that fabric. I love it. 
Elaine is the light greens and this um, plaid or gingham, which is just gorgeous. You can see them all together here. Look at the greens. Oh, so nice. That is a really wonderful fabric line. I'm sure you've put some other things with it, but it just looks really great. Your plaid sashing is awesome too. She's using several colors there, not just two. So if you're thinking of that, Elaine has done it to show you. Jennifer. Jennifer has the roses from the Tula Pink fabric line. Karen has Study in Blue and the whole family portrait. They are so amazing. The, there's um, these, it's like sea, sea things because I uh, see some whales. Looks like a, a black, black and white whale. What are those called? I forget. They have a name. Is it, are they orcas? I forget. <laughs> and our ambassador Kendall with his block he's got some sashing on on either end remember to go visit his YouTube channel where he is sewing along every week with several of the projects Kim's she has her first block here with the bunnies I think that is also a Tula pink fabric uh, animals are her thing look how she set her triangles above and below and so that it gave a totally different look to the block and then all of them together. Oh, so good. They are really looking fantastic. Linda's is beautiful with this light blue, very soft and pretty and tan, light blue and tan. And then she's got some navy also for her sashings. Liz is rocking the black and white Tula. There's that, um, there's that panda down there again. Isn't he cute? So cute. Mary's is gorgeous with green and yellow. So classic. So here we have another Mary. This is a different Mary. And she is using this novelty print with the little, um, the little camping, all the camp camping people. And then all of hers together, you can see the campsites all around in some of the other blocks. How fun. And I love she has her other sashing done. Her checkerboard. See the checkerboard on the bottom right? Pamela is also using my fabric line. There it is. So pretty. You did such a great job. Patsy has teal or aqua or turquoise, whichever way you want to say it. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Just, just gorgeous. Patty is rocking some um, yellow bee fabric. There's tiny little bees in there on the background, on the prints, and then all together there you can see. And she also has a really gorgeous um, sort of purpley checkerboard. Sandy has some pink, like the pink and the pinky reds. Plus here they are all together. She is doing all the 12 inch blocks. So there you can see 12 inch blocks with this uh, um, sashing, just a plain sashing between them. A taupe, which is so pretty with this. Curly's gorgeous, gorgeous floral block is part of this. Look how flat your block is. Oh my goodness. And then Shirley's family here of blocks is amazing. Shirley's, and I love her checkerboard because she has multiple kind of background fabrics that just sort of make it dance and glow. They're not all the same fabric for the light in her checkerboard. So check out how that looks. Susan's yellow and gray. And it is also just stunning with her whole family, her whole family of fabrics. That is a really, really pretty uh, gray with yellow fabrics, uh, yellow flower fabric. Really, really pretty. Teresa's a block. And then look at her sashings. I love that green. And then those little flowers. But look together. She's got the whole family. There are cars. Look at the cars up on the top left. That is so cool. This is so good. Very good. Very, very good. Terry's yellow and blue, another super classic color combination. And I like that yellow fabric. It's, it's really neat. It looks kind of like a quilt block, just a little bit. And Val uh, has light colors, pastels, a little pale ginghams, pink and light green, and then her whole family of blocks where she's actually popped in navy and aqua and dark grays. See, look at that. It's all just looking amazing. Here is my block from the solstice. So I did uh, reds for mine, ready pinky reds, and then that um, weave for the background, you know, like a lattice work. So I want to talk about a few other projects, things that are coming up, things that I'm working on. But first, I just want to talk a little bit about 
project expectations for ourselves. You know, how do we manage our own project expectations? You know, one of the things about me is that I was, um, I was sort of born with a watch on my wrist, I think. I am time obsessed, which was very good for doing project management, which was my corporate job for uh, many years, you know, running projects, knowing when things were due, breaking them down, that kind of a that kind of a dealie. And I take that into my um, business here. So, you know, knowing how to run things, knowing when things are due and how long they take and things like that. So I'm constantly looking at how long things take to do, whether they're for fun, <laughs> which is really annoying probably for a regular person. <laughs> but, you know, like, how long will that take to go to the carnival? Like, you know, like, uh, how long will you stand in line? You know, how long will you do this? Uh, and... <laughs> It's just, and I'm okay with it. This is totally fine. This is how I work. This is how it makes me happy to think. But it often makes me take that extra step because I'm used to running projects and knowing when things have to be delivered and how long they take. I, I've taken an extra step. And so I'm looking at the cross stitch that I'm doing for the temperature quilt. And because in March I literally did zero, the big fat egg of cross stitch. I did zero cross stitch. Uh, maybe the first day or so I did the roofs for the temperature quilt, the next two roofs, which I was pretty happy about. I thought, great, I'm off to a good start. And like that, that went on, that went on the table. But I got back to it uh, on uh, the other day, the other evening, it's Easter evening, actually, Easter evening, that Sunday, I decided, okay, I'm going to work on this. But what I wanted to do was kind of see how long it was taking because I had the entire month of March. I may have just said August if I did forget that. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But entire month of March to, to do. And there are five lines to do the house. You know, five rows to do the house. Each day is two thread colors because generally you're high and you're low are not are going to be more than five degrees apart and the degrees temperatures are degrees apart and so like like a temperature is like 26 degrees to 30 degrees 31 degrees to 35 degrees so let me show you what was happening in March oh my goodness Mar I'm gonna okay let me let me just get close so here is one row like here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this, uh, let's go over here to March. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there's the high is the top three, the low are the bottom three. So that six times two is 12. So there's potential for 12 thread changes, 12 thread changes, that's insane. These three weeks, I had to change threads for, for like, of the 12, like 10. 10 had to be thread changes and I'm no good at like working up here and then working over here you know I just don't have the counting skills yet to visualize when it's a blank canvas like this you know getting it in the right spot I mess up so I really wanted to do one row then the second row without messing around but let me just show you on here let me just get this here I highlighted these here you can use this is a perfect example 46 and 45 for the low those are two different thread colors because it was 45 to whatever 50 you know like rather like I'm sorry like 40 to 45 and then 46 to 50 and so they're two different thread colors so I had to change threads just because they were one degree apart and that happened over and over and over again for March that I really did I did the first three weeks of March on uh, Sunday Eve on Easter Eve uh, Easter day it took me two hours and I'm like two hours this is insane this project is not worth two hours I could have done binding on a quilt in two hours so I got up today and I decided I would do I would work on the next row and it turns out I had more days similar and I also was getting a little quicker because I have not was not not a month rusty <laughs> <laughs> I was back in the groove and so I got the next rows done a little bit quicker. I still have to do I still have to finish out March, but I'm I'm almost, I'm I'm closer, much closer. So this is where I decided 
a couple things. One is that I absolutely have to do this every week because then I'm only dealing with like seven days and that is very doable. I can change the threads for seven days and it's not, not, and it's not so bad. The other thing is that I know I would like to do more cross stitch because I really enjoy the whole sitting here um, stitching, you know, holding something. I used to do loads of hand applique and right now I would much rather do this. I, I just, I just am not into the hand applique right now. And so this is really interests me. The designs interest me. I always wanted to do cross stitch. Uh, I just never got into it. So I'm really excited. I have enough patterns to last me until I'm 152. Uh, so, <laughs> so I thought, I want to do what a lot of cross stitchers I've seen do is take a day, every day of the week, the seven days, seven projects, have seven projects and maybe I'll pick six projects. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then I just stitch on them like 30 minutes or an hour a day and to, and have that sort of as my personal quiet time. Um, Maybe I listen to something, maybe I listen to music, maybe I listen to a podcast or watch a, or listen to a, watch a video while I'm doing it. But I want to gather those. I'm going to pick seven because that's the way I am. I'm going to, because more is better. And I am going to pick seven projects and that'll be that. Speaking of projects, I did finish this guy. This was the Cross Stitch University. He is finished. Changing the little color around here did practically nothing to a darker, but it is slightly darker than the white. Um, <laughs> it's gray, but I could have gone with darker gray. Anyway, I'm not changing it. So I need to put a little border on this and make it into a little quilt. Um, that needs to come out here on the docket. Okay, so that is my, that is what I've been mulling over in the past, you know, the past few days. It's just been on my mind to sort of revamp a little bit like what I like and what I enjoy and what I want to work on and make it happen um, because it can be, I mean, I'm just one person uh, and I like to do a lot of things, but I can't, I can't do all the things I want to do. It's impossible, but I do want to, I really do want that, that handwork time, that little bit of handwork time. And so I'm going to make that happen for myself and give it a go. Give, give it a go. <laughs> All right, let's talk about um, a couple of projects here. The solstice. You all wanted to see what fabric I picked. And I said I was going to order some ombre. And I really like the, um, the gray tones of the original pattern. Let me stick it up here. So I really enjoy those gray tones. I think that they're really pretty. It's not something I generally work in. Um, and so I thought I would do that. I think it would look great in navies. It would look great in anything that you want, but because it's a solstice, you know, it's a, it's an eclipse. I'm sorry. It's an eclipse, the solar eclipse. Do I say what? I don't say the right word. What is wrong with me? Um, the solar eclipse. So I wanted to do the grays. So this is what I did as so I ordered, I think I told you I was going to order, oh my, my, wait, 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 wait. Okay. I was going to order some ombres. And this is, these are from Moda and they're sparkly. So they go dark to a light and then the backside is light down to dark. So this is the darkest one. Okay. Then I ordered the next one, but there, then there didn't seem to be a third in the, that worked with the sparkles. And so I ended up getting, see, so this is dark up to light, but then, so I ended up trying this one. I don't know if it's going to be good or not. I'm not sure. This would be the lightest because this is also light because, uh, let me see. Can you see? It's very subtle. That's much more subtle than I was expecting. So I'm like, eh, I don't know, but this is a very skinny stripes down to wider stripes. So it still gives that effect. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking I probably should have found something. I just don't think that they have a lighter than this. They just kind of did the two or, or there was a black black. So I may end up getting the 
black, black? I don't know. I don't know. Chime in. Chime in. You can chime in and tell me here at YouTube. Just tell me at YouTube what you think. Would you go and try to find, maybe go the black, black instead of this really light? I don't know. It wasn't what I was expecting. And, uh, and I really, I didn't even know how this, my camera's, my camera's rolling. I don't know how it's even going to work with the ombre. So I probably should make one panel. That's probably what I should do. Make one panel. Then I know what it looks like. I'm going to go look again to see if there's the lights, if there's a light, light dark on this sparkly one and see what I can find. Okay. So that's kind of how things go. Sometimes you're not always sure. Um, you know, eh, eh, eh. And then, of course, while I was ordering that, I spied this because why? Why was I, why was I spying this? I have no idea, but I got a piece of the owls. They, remember, I showed you the bag where they sold you sold you all bought the bag, the big, great big bag. So this is Tulip Pink's uh, owls, and I know it's not the current line. Which line is it? I'll link it down below. This is called Moon Garden. Uh, so you know her stuff kind of comes in, sells, and then they don't they don't ever reorder it. They do the bags and things, so you can check that. It'll probably come back in, but the fabrics they tend to be that's it. Okay, so let's see. The other thing is I got some favorite pens. I know, I know you are just dying to know this. Gel pens, and they were half off at the grocery store. I cannot tell you how happy that may be because I think they're extraordinarily expensive, these gel pens. I have no idea. It's like just because they're popular, they're expensive. Why are they so expensive? Um, but <laughs> they were half off and I was, whoops, I was thrilled. Thrilled beyond thrilled to get half off gel pens. <laughs> All right, let's go to the back side or the other side and we'll wrap up. Okay, I went and ordered putty, which is a lighter version of that ombre. It doesn't look a lot different than the medium, so we'll see because I can use them for the back if I decide I you know, want to do that. Uh, and I think the other gray might be good, the stripe might be good for binding, although there's way more that I need. It'll, it'll go in the back too. But okay, so I ordered putty. So they're just, they're, they are a limited number of colors for that galaxy ombre. So I'll link you to it. You can see, and I ordered the three grays. So here again is my block up close with the fussy cutting. I just have to share that. I love that so much. Okay. Thanks for listening to all of my um, musings, uh, my, my thoughts on projects. And I'd love to hear you leave comments here at YouTube. Tell me how you think through your projects. And I know some of you don't think to this detail. I mean, I don't expect anybody to think like, like that. It's kind of uh, too much, <laughs> but it's how my brain works on it. And I'm happy with that. So I love you. Mwah. Thanks for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.